If you want to learn how you can start doing double taps, then this video will help you. Before we get started, I would recommend learning how to air dribble and having a simple understanding at reading some sort of bounces. If you haven't learned those, then doing double taps would just be a lot harder to learn and do without having a decent amount of air control. And now let's get started. The first thing that you want to learn is how to get the setup. It is very similar to an air dribble setup, so that is one of the reasons why you should learn that first. There are many tutorials on that. To go through the process quickly, you want to first be at a decent speed with the ball rolling on the ground going towards the wall. After that, you can either hit the ball with the corner of your cart, or you can turn into the ball and hit with the nose of your cart. Try not to hit the ball super vertical since that won't get you anywhere and will make it incredibly difficult and a waste of boost. This is the most important step and how you hit this setup determines on how effective you can make your double tap. Now this is where the air dribbling skill comes in. There are a couple ways to hit a double tap, an air dribble, a single touch, and one where you flip into the ball. Depending on how far you are is what you should do. If you are somewhere on the other half, close to the opposite net, then you would just jump off the wall, hit it, and then read it. If you are somewhere in midfield, or a bit behind it, then you would do a flip to get more power to reach the backboard since you are a bit further instead of just flying at it and tapping it and getting a weak touch. And finally, if you are really far, like near your net or just beside your corner, then you would do an air dribble. There's a chance that you could just do a flip and there's a high chance it would be too late to read it or someone is just going to take the ball while you are trying to get a double tap and you are a million miles away. But if you air dribble it, you can take it across while also being with the ball and having the read faster. You can also make the speed of the double tap however fast you want. You can also hold the arrow button for a little bit right before you hit the ball if you need the extra power to reach the backboard. Lastly, the read. You would normally want to be a little bit lower than the ball when it bounces since the ball is not just going to bounce straight. It really depends on how fast the ball is traveling, but the main issue is when you're going too high. So that is why I mentioned that. A common problem with double tapping is being too close when trying to read the backboard. If you're still going pretty fast to the ball while it is still trying to reach the backboard, then it will be insanely difficult and get harder the closer you are. If you want a decent double tap, then create a decent distance away from the backboard. Having that space from the backboard can give you a cleaner shot and give more options on where you can shoot the ball on the rebound. If you're really close, then it will decrease the amount of the goal that you can shoot or it can even make it impossible to shoot since you're way too close. If you want a efficient shot when reading the ball, then you want to use the notes of your card to get the most power when hitting the ball. So basically what I'm saying is that having space can make it more unpredictable and can give you a better chance of shooting something more accurate. If you're actually planning on learning this, then I would really use free play for this since it gives you like a better variety on when you're setting it up. And training packs is focused on situations that can occur at any point in the match. If you're planning on using training packs, then you should switch it up every day you play. It's better to not know every single shot and do the same exact training packs in the same order every single day. That has no variety and only trains you for those specific situations and won't be balanced for any other scenarios that will happen in game. Doing the exact same pack every single day with the same order will just be too easy. You will know what is going on. You want to play many different training packs and then once you go back to a previous one, you should not know what is in that pack. Another thing about using the flip on your double tap setup is controlling your speed. The faster you go, the harder you hit. That can be a very important role into how hard you hit the ball into the backboard from the setup. Let me show you an example in game. This is the ranked match that I played with my friend from the previous videos. As you can see, I'm controlling my speed and I used to flip here only because I'm not moving that fast.
if I just do a single touch, then there isn't really much of a way I can get near the net. Now from here, I have had so much practice with doing double taps, and there is no way that I would be able to go up there if it was bouncing normally. So I see that it's going down from the slope that is near the ceiling. So I just keep going straight and leveled with my aerial. During this whole time, I am paying attention on how fast the ball is and where I am at the same time. I'm trying to read lower than where it actually is, so there's no point of going straight up, and that is how physics work. Now I have to read, I'm hitting with the nose of my car so I can get an angle, and it's pretty fast. And that is pretty much the whole setup, and how I got that double tap. The longer you do these, it builds into your muscle memory, and it can make it a lot easier to hit shots like that. One thing that makes it hard for people to learn how to double tap is when they overcomplicate the shot or try to be too fancy with it. Just try not to make it so fancy. Just keep it simple so you can have maximum control of the whole play. I know it could be tempting to just do all them spins like I keep doing. I have like a really bad habit. It would be a lot easier if you would just not focus on that. And if you do, you have a high chance of messing it up which is why it kind of took a bit long to even record this footage for the background which is because i kept trying to overcomplicate it and go too fancy which is a habit i developed and that is not good but that is about it for this video to sum it up first you want to roll the ball and hit it with either the corner of your car or drive into it with the nose second if you're in front of the half field line then do a single tap. If you are behind half field, do a flip, and if you are near your corner, then you can air dribble it. It all really depends on how fast you are going, so it can change. Third, try not to be too close and have a safe distance while also being quick about your play. The faster the double tap, the harder it is to save, but that does not mean to be two inches away from the backboard. Fourth, try to use the nose of your car if you are a bit too close, then use the front wheels and get a soft touch. Fifth, switch up the training packs to have a variety and keep it balanced. And last at least, six, practice your aerial control and get used to the way you turn your car. You can also look at my previous videos and learn how. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like and comment. Don't forget to subscribe with post notifications on. Hope you have a nice week. See ya.